When anything happened in the ward today? Three new babies in the maternity ward, and that dance hall girl come too. Only she ain't gonna be so pretty anymore. Well, that's too bad. All dance hall girls should be pretty. Huh. Oh, Barney, turn off the fire under that coffee, will you? It'll be so strong a Swede couldn't drink it. Hey, never mind about the Swedes. Pay attention to your game. You always want something just when I got my mind on a good story. Let Luke do it. I'll do it yourself. You and Herman drink all the coffee. Casey's had noise out in those car nights. Got any hot coffee? Sure, on the stove. Help yourself, Doc. And turn out the fire, will you? Don't be playing out of turn. Where's Herman? He's upstairs on the carpet. He's in trouble again. All right, you're blocked. Go to the boneyard. Or try the morgue. We have some new stiffs over there. Oh, Doc, don't talk like that. That's one thing I don't like about working in a hospital, <laughs> handling them things. That's because you're dumb, and there's only one thing dumber than a dumb Swede. What's that? A smart Norwegian. Never mind that Norwegian stuff. Yeah, I suppose the Irish got all the brains. Well, you never heard of an Irish Einstein, did you? Who's he? He's the engineer on the 515. Oh, that Einstein. Shh, shh. You guys, this is a hospital. Let's have it quiet. Stretcher. I didn't hear no ambulance. Could be a police car. Maybe it's another shooting. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, I got a kid. Another deserted guy in the Wabash Station. Better take a look at him. Now get in here. Body, get in the train. All right, sir. Cute little devil, ain't it? Yeah. Better get it over to the nursery before Herman sees it, or he'll want to adopt. He should adopt it with five of his own and three or four adopted with it now. If he takes another one home, his old lady will throw him out. Howling, Rainey. Better get it over to the clinic. He's suffering from exposure. Yes, doctor. Emergency. Have Dr. Hopper. Yes, doctor. Now, where's Herman? I've got to get his signature on this report. He's upstairs with a soup. Doug Jordan can sign them for you. There you are, Doc. It's a lucky thing Herman wasn't here. He'd be over nursing that kid and getting into more trouble. He's in enough trouble right now. He'll probably get fired. Have a cup of coffee, Regan? I could go for something like that. Herman makes good coffee. What does this mean, Herman? I didn't think it was a lie. The man told me he was out of work and uh, his kiddies had no bread. And uh, his wife uh, was sick and he had no money. So he took the loaf of bread and the policeman shot him. I don't believe a word of it. As big a fool as you are. I wouldn't think you'd have fallen for a story like that. But I didn't think he was lying. I took the bread to the address, but he didn't live there. You're an idiot, Herman. That man has a police record a mile long. You believe every yarn that's told you. You're working in a hospital, not listening to bedtime stories. I, I, I don't touch a drop when I'm working. Come here. You, you, you'll be sorry. Come here. I knew you wouldn't like it. I smell bad liquor in my time. But what in the world is that? Limburger cheese. I brought it along for my night lunch. I'm glad you told me. Now get out. But remember, I'm warning you. One more dereliction of duty, and it means your job. Understand? It, it, it won't happen again, Miss Trees. I'm, I'm very much obliged. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Trees. Well, I've got to go. Give Herman my regard. I will if he still has a job. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know, I'd hate to see Herman get the gate. He's been here for 15 years. Ah, oh, he ain't got any sense. Kid's gonna get a can, sure, if he keeps on with that stuff. Why don't you fellas talk? Talk to him? I've talked to him till I'm blue in the face. Ambulance call. Right for me. Doc Tobin's next out. I'd better see if he's awake. He'll pick you up at the side. Nice night for a guy to be driving an ambulance. Streets all slippery. If you can't take it, why don't you quit? I've been driving ambulance for 20 years. Also that blizzard of 18. Used to see that to fold it up. Huh, you probably carried cases on your back. Ah, uh, you pups don't know anything about ambulance driving. Hello, Herman. Hello. Uh, did you get the call? 
sure. Is that unusual around a hospital? No. What happened to you? It won't happen again. While you was out making a fool of yourself, a streetcar hit a bus down by the viaduct and we had a dozen emergencies here. Oh, it's too bad. Poor people getting hurt. It's all gone. Well, that's all right. I make some more. I had to do all your work while you were gone. Did you get all the names and addresses and uh, nearest relatives? I did the best I could. They're on the desk. A receiving clerk should pay attention to his duty. Oh, come on, little kitty. I got the word. Oh, look here, Herman. You gotta cut this foolishness out. Yeah, the idea of a family man like you risking his job for the sake of some cock and bull story a gangster tells you. It was such a fine story. I didn't think it was a lie. Well, every yarn you fall for is a lie. Not everyone. You remember the Japanese suicide last winter? It was so. I found the kids in the cellar with the gas turned on just in time. Like he said I would. Ah, oh, that's one in a thousand. All the other times you've been a sap. You'd have lost your job that time. Only the newspapers gave you a big story. Maybe you are right. But I always think maybe this time like the Japanese. They'll come a story, which is true. Oh, you're nuts. They don't come often, but if I find one, I'm happy. You watch, there'll be one which is worthwhile. Yeah, a lot of good that'll do you when the soup fires you. Now listen, Herman, get wise to yourself. We don't want to see you lose your job these hard times with all those kids of yours depending on you. Well, I promise the soup, it won't happen again. Get Dr. Jordan. Don't die. I've got you to the hospital now. Are you the doctor? No. Uh, go get him. Well, why doesn't he hurry? He'll be here in just a minute. Bring her down here. Put her right down here. She mustn't die, doctor. She mustn't. Stand back, young man. She's unconscious, Herman. Get a record later. Bleeding badly. Not so that. Take out the surgery. I'll uh, take the patient's valuables. Do you think she'll be all right? She'll be all right. How did it happen? Oh, I, I hit her with my car. If she dies, I, I hope they hang me. Oh, were you going fast? Yes. I'm sorry, but uh, I have to call an office on this case, sir. Uh, uh, did uh, anyone see you? No, it, it happened by that old cutoff near the car tracks. Ah, that's a bad spot, yes, I know. And, uh, and you didn't see her in time to stop the car. No, but I should have. I suppose I would have, too, if I hadn't been drunk. But you aren't drunk now, young man. I was then, though. But you shouldn't tell me all that. It's a serious offense. Oh, why don't they bring her out? You must be patient. Do you think she'll pull through all right? Yes. I've got to go in and see her. Only doctors and nurses are permitted in the surgery unless the patient is in immediate danger of death and requests presence of nearest relative. Now come here, young man. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, but I... I forgot to call an officer on this case. You see, that is uh, the regulation here. Uh, Moran. Will you kindly call headquarters and tell Sergeant Muldoon to come over right away? Sure, Herman. 
Come here, young man. Uh, I want to talk to you. I don't feel much like talking. But you can listen. Come. All what I want to say is this. I don't uh, like to see a nice young man to go to jail. You are sorry for what happened, and it will be a good lesson. You mean you'll be willing to help me get out of it? I don't like to see you in trouble. Thanks very much, but you're wasting your time. I think I'll take my medicine. Wait a minute. If you would have killed her, I would say yes. But you haven't. And besides, she may be poor. Maybe she has no one in the world. We don't know. Or maybe she loses her job for being sick. It happened before. What could you help her in jail? I suppose there's something in that. I'd do all I could to help her, but it won't do any good to lie. I don't ask you to lie. If Sergeant Muldoon asks you, you tell the truth. Only forget the part of being drunk. Yes, with no witnesses and the streets wet as they are, it was an accident. Unless you say you was drunk. But I still have a breath. You won't have if you eat my Limburger cheese and drink a cup of black coffee here. So, or you smoke my old pipe here. Four out of five of your best friends will tell you the same. <laughs> now, now, eat all you can. I'm going over to see how the little girl is. Name, please. Julia Wilkins. The address? 249 Winslow Street. The age is not over 20. And uh, the nearest relative? I haven't any relatives. I'll get the other information from the medical charge. I'm awfully sorry, miss. That's all right. I got confused and stepped in front of your car. No, no, it was my fault. Uh, don't talk to the patient, please. You have all the chances to explain your case to the police. Uh, all right, the look. Hello, Herman. Hello, my dear. What's the idea of getting me out on a night like this? Oh, nothing important. Uh, I, I want to see you once in a while so you don't forget me. Well, I'll forgive you if you've got a cup of your coffee handy. I just made it fresh. Come. Sit down, Mordun. Would you like to have a nice cheese sandwich? I'd just as soon take half while I can. Hello, Willick. Hello, Sergeant. Well, Herman, what's it all about? Well, I, uh, Mr. Uh, um, uh, uh, this young man had an, uh, had an accident with an automobile. Anybody hurt? Yes, sir. Uh, I struck a lady. Seriously hurt? No, no. She'll, she'll be all right in a couple of days. Name? John Russell. Age, address? Uh, 1429 Deering Street. That's where I live, and my age is 24. How fast were you going? Uh, uh, Fifteen miles. Uh, it happened over on the old track, and uh, there's not much light, and it was raining. Are you a witness in the case? No. Uh, there was no witness. Is Paul a friend of yours? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, he's a friend of mine. I'm glad you make good coffee, Herman. It sort of picks a fellow up. Thank you, Mike. You want some more coffee? Next time I'm in the neighborhood. All right. Thank you. Very, thank you very much, Sergeant. You got me out of a bad jam tonight. I don't deserve it, but thanks. Now we list the young lady's property. Cash, one dollar and. 38 cents. And uh, two keys. Two keys. How are you today? Well, I'm feeling fine, Doctor. Thanks. When can I go home? Oh, no rush about that. We'll see later. What did the x-ray show? Didn't find any fractures, just bruises and lacerations. Hmm. Well, you were very lucky. Hello. 
You should have sounded your horn. Yes, I know. I'm careless that way. Have you forgiven me yet? Why, yes, of course I have. I suppose that corsage is for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you put it down, I... I could see your face. <clears throat> I... I hope you like it. Uh, that is the corsage, not the face. <laughs> well, I... I don't particularly care for lilies on my chest. Please don't, kid. I feel awfully bad about it, really. I was only fooling. Don't worry about it. I'm all right. Oh, Nick, could you put these in water for me? Well, I'll try. You're going to be moved to a private room pretty quick. And who do you think is going to pay for that? Mr. Hubel Castle. I met him as I was leaving, and I, I told him about you and how your being here was my fault, and he said, well, now, we'll have to do something about that. Nothing's too good for a friend of yours. Well, that's very nice of him. And very nice of you, too. Could I meet Mr. Hoople? You know what the rest of it. Uh, Castle. Castle, and thank him for the favor. Sure, he wants to meet you, too. I'll go get him for you. You stay here. Oh, wait a minute. You're really a very nice person. And I wouldn't think of leaving until you get back. <laughs> that did sound sort of silly, didn't it? I guess I'm excited. Um, I'll be back. Here's some more flowers for the soup. Shall I take them up to her? Well, I guess I'll take them up to her. All right. Herman, what's this I hear about you recommending Lindberger cheese for alcoholic patients? I have a theory, Doctor, that nothing can strengthen a man's courage like Limburger cheese. Well, you better be eating a lot of it, then, because you'll need it when the cops get out here for aiding that punk. He's not a punk. He's a nice young fella, and besides, he's interested in the little... Hello! Did you see the little girl? Yes, I just came from and here. And how is everything? Oh, we hit it off great. You know, it may sound cool, but I'm almost glad that accident happened. <laughs> Come here. Come with me. Get in there. Don't pay any attention to them. They are good-hearted, but they like to have their little jokes. Well, maybe it did sound a little strange. Now about the little girl. Do you like her? Yes. Is she beautiful? Mm hmm And uh, are you going to take care of her? Oh, looking after her isn't going to be any hardship. And uh, did you bring some flowers? Yes, yes, I took care of that. Uh, what kind of flowers did you bring? Oh, poinsettias and tiger lilies. A little girl should have some roses. Are those for her? Uh, uh, yes, yes, sure, they are for her. And uh, little girls should have some roses. Oh, say, she'll be tickled pink. Say, she wants to see you, too. Uh, the little girl? Yes, I told her all about you, and I made a big hit with her. Oh, I, I can't leave my duties, and, and I don't look so good today. Come on, you can spare just a minute. I would like to say hello. She'll be disappointed if you don't. Well, all right, I'll come. Just wait a minute. I'll fix my hair a little bit. I always look so messy, you know. And, uh, and uh, don't say anything about who's paying for the private room, will you? She's very proud. Little girls should keep their pride. Come on. Uh... Moran, you will please look after things for a minute. I I'll write to be back. Are you going upstairs? Uh, Moran, in the regulations, it says... It says that you shouldn't go visiting while on duty. Well, I I I'll be back in a minute, and you can do that for a friend. I'll be right back. It's all right with me, but see what happens if the superintendent catches up with you. Thanks for the buggy ride. I don't understand all this sudden attention. Did I win a prize? Mr. Hoopelkoffel's order. Is that a name or a symptom? Well, that's a name. He's a pretty big man here, isn't he? Yes, yes, indeed. Is this the place? Yes, come in. My, you're a hard one to keep track of. Uh, Miss Wilkins, this is Mr. Hoopelkoffel. I'm very glad to meet you. Pleasure's all mine. I want to thank you for all the nice things you've done. He brought you some flowers, too. Little girls should have some roses. Oh, you shouldn't have. They're beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. When Johnny told me how he ran across you... <laughs> that's that a joke? <laughs> now, let's forget all about that. But anyhow, it's a nice way to get acquainted with a sweet young lady. 
We transferred a patient from the accident ward to 416. Did you send the file card down to the record room? Yes, sir. Charts been checked. I think I'll take a look. All right. I guess I have to go now. <laughs> I, I have some work to do. Well, it, it was a great pleasure to me. <laughs> Good evening. Everything all right, my dear? Yes, wonderful. Mr. Hubelkast has taken care of everything. I can explain this, uh, Miss Trace. Oh, don't go. Just let me interrupt your visit. But when you have finished, will you call at my office? I want your advice on a matter of discipline. Thank you. Thank you, She saw about something? Well, uh, she's the superintendent, and uh, sometimes she don't understand. Oh, don't pay any attention to her. Here, you take these roses to her, and she'll feel better. Oh, no, no, no. Roses are for little girls. Oh, please do. I have these other lovely flowers. Yes, go ahead, Anna. All right. I'll give her the roses with your love. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, Herman. Good night. Did you like my flowers better than the roses? It was very nice of you to bring them. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Well, I, I want to do all I can. There's nothing more you can do. Do you mind if I come to see you every day while you're here? I don't know. They're very strict here. They turn out the lights at 10 o'clock, and I haven't the key to the front door. Now, I promise to behave very well, and I won't give them one cause of complaint. Well, if you can satisfy them that you're a steady, respectable young man, I, I might allow you to visit me. Thanks. You're never very serious about anything, are you? Oh, sometimes. Well, you need some rest now. I'll say good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. And thanks. You know? You're an awfully regular fellow. Night. Night. And it was only for two minutes while everything was quiet downstairs. You're a problem, Herman. I'm neglecting my duty when I don't discharge you. But they're such a nice couple. And, uh, and the little girl sends you uh, these roses with her love. You're a sentimental old fool. This institution is run on discipline. It won't happen again. Not for a minute. I, I promise you. I'm warning you, Herman. My patience is exhausted. The next time, you'll be discharged. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very much obliged. I ain't seen her heard telling Miss Wilkins for about a week. Does she still live here? Well, Hope is still up there. She's going to have to change her address if she don't pay Mr. Sloan some rent pretty soon. Well, I'll leave this with you to give to her. And tell her we're going to take that piano out unless this bill is paid by Saturday. Yes, sir, I sure will. Tell me, we're out here in the street. That's all right. We've got an umbrella. 
been out with him for the last few days, but you let me have my rent. I haven't been with him. Well, it's none of my business where you're in. And I don't mind you having a guy upstairs as long as the right kind of a fellow. Other girls do. Oh, I suppose you're too virtuous, huh? But you ain't too virtuous to try to skid me, are you? I'll pay you what I owe you, and I'm moving from your penny arcade. I'm going to be married. Huh. Come on, get to work here. Snap out of it. Hello, Julia. Surprised? Yes, I am surprised. I was quite upset by her disappearance, so I asked your landlord if she'd let me in. I thought I might find a cue to your whereabouts. May I? What happened? What's the thing? You changed your mind? Yes, I have. I didn't know I had a rival. You didn't have at that time. I was on my way to your place to accept all you had to offer, when something happened, and I've changed my mind. I'm not considered ungenerous. You can have anything I have within reason. Oh, it isn't that, Stanley. He's included the one thing you failed to mention. <laughs> Marriage? Yes. Money? No. No, he's young, and he'll have to earn it. Then you throw away everything you wanted. Your musical career will suffer. I've had time to realize that I was just another girl whose family and friends liked to hear her play and kidded themselves into believing she was a genius. <clears throat> Julia, this is all romantic nonsense. If you insist on marrying this man, it will mean drudgery, poverty, scrubbing, green potatoes with hands that were made for music, the weaving dreams. I, I won't let you do it. I've definitely made up my mind to grab whatever happiness I can, instead of living in hopes of all of it. The most foolish mistake you could make. Everything is waiting for you, just as I promised. Your own rooms, a new piano. I've engaged Martini, the best teacher in this country. Next year, when you've learned all he has to offer, Europe. I promise you, you shall have everything you should have. You'll be your own mistress. And yours. Oh, it isn't only that. I want you to have all these things, because, uh, my own way, I'm in love. You've been kind to me, and you've encouraged me when I need it most. Let's forget the rest. Hmm. I'm not going to give you up that easily. If you insist on going through with this thing, it will mean only trouble and regret. Sooner or later, you will need me. When that time comes, I'll be waiting, ready to help. But I want you to feel free to come to me. I won't forget all you've tried to do for me. But I couldn't go through with the other. Let's always be just good friends. I'm not going to accept your answer. Mm. I'll keep in touch with you. Goodbye. Miss Wilkins, there's a gentleman here to see you. I'm sorry. This is Mr. Colton, Mr. Russell. How do you do? And how do you do? Julia's been telling me all about you. I to be congratulated. She's a wonderful girl. Thanks. Mr. Colton's an old friend of mine. He's helped me a lot with my studying. I'd like to be very frank with both of you. Certainly, I hope you will be. Julia has a remarkable musical talent, which I hope to foster, for purely a selfish reason. I'm very much in love with her. Well, you are being frank. She told me she's in love with you. But there are things I can offer her that might seem beyond your reach. I'd like to help her. Of course, I have asked her to be my wife. I'm quite capable of taking care of her. Don't be offended. I'd like to do it. Money doesn't mean everything. If money can buy her happiness, there's no price I wouldn't pay. You know where to reach me, Julia? Goodbye. Glad to see you. Goodbye, Dan. So that's why you asked me to wait in the rain. I didn't know he was here. Does he mean anything to you? Nothing. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. I could have gone with him before I met you. 
I made up my mind to once. But you knocked that idea out of my head. I guess I'm just jealous. But that's because I'm so fond of you. You asked me to marry you, John. I'll give you back your offer if you want it. Now, don't be a dummy all your life. I believe you. And I need you. Why, if I were to ever lose you, I'm afraid I'd sink right back into what I used to be. And believe me, I was a pretty useless thing. You do love me, don't you? You know I do. Can we have the young lady with us? Yes, madam. What does she like, Thomas? I didn't observe, madam. Is it anyone we know? A stranger, Miss Doris. I'll see you in present. Yes, sir. Probably some little tramp he's picked up. Now, don't let's jump at conclusions. Of course, they would do something nasty just at this time. John, Doris must be considered. Her plans can't be interfered with just now. All right, I'll handle the best I can. Oh, don't be afraid, dear. I'll make them understand how much you mean to me. But suppose they don't like me. They can't help liking you. Hello, Dad. Well, hello, son. I'm glad to see you. Father, this is Julia Wilkins. How do you, Miss Wilkins? How do you do? Julia has just promised to be my wife. Huh? Well, if it's all settled, why consult me? Or do you want me to give you my best wishes? No, I, I want your help. I know I've been sort of a black sheep, and I've given you a lot of trouble and worry, but that's all over now, and I want a chance to prove myself. Very nicely said, son. I hope you stick to it. I, uh, I've never met you before. No, I, I don't believe you have. How long have you known my son? About a week. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. We're very much in love. Well, do you think it's safe to risk a lifetime of happiness on a week's acquaintance? I didn't realize until I came to the house just now what the circumstances were. I haven't told her anything about the family. Your money hasn't made life any too easy for me, and I didn't want it to influence her. Oh, then your actions were not premeditated. You knew nothing of Johnny's uh, position. If I had known, I wouldn't have come here. Hmm. Are you in love with my son? Yes, sir. I am. If this is a family conference, why should we be excluded? Glad to see you, wandering boy. Oh, need you ask that, son. Hello, Punk. Hello, yourself. I'm glad you came in. Julia, this is my mother and my sister, Doris. How do you do? Julia's going to change the last part of her name to Russell. Well, you picked a nice time for a blow-up. I'm getting married myself this month. Oh, Doris. Well, I, I'm awfully sorry. You see, John asked me to come here to meet his family. And you probably knew all about his family before you came here. Please, Doris, please. This young lady's a guest in our house. Well, she might as well know now that Johnny hasn't a penny of his own and is utterly dependent on you. Father's money doesn't enter into this. The young lady might have a different opinion. I think it'd be a little more charitable if you didn't discuss it any further. I'm not asking for charity. I brought Julia here because I thought you'd be glad to know that I'm in earnest for the first time of my life. We are glad. We do appreciate that, son. And I'm sure you'll understand, my dear, that a mother is deeply interested in the girl to whom she gives her only son. And without wanting to criticize in any way, it's only natural that we should want to know more about you. I think I know something about her. Didn't you play the piano at Bastani's Cabaret over on 3rd Avenue? Yes. I worked there to earn money to support myself while I was studying music. And now you expect father to support you. Well, he's big that way. He'll probably make some kind of a settlement with you. I won't have Julia insulted. You're just selfish. We don't need or want anything you've got to offer. Now, if you'll pardon us, we'll go. Come on, Julia. Just a minute, Johnny. You convinced me very definitely that I wouldn't fit in. But it won't cost you anything, Mr. Russell. I came here on approval, not COD. I'm sorry I intruded. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want a word with you children. You've impressed me more than I'm willing to admit, young woman. If you're sincere, and I hope you are, you have my admiration. Son, since you've grown up and have a mind of your own, we'll quarrel now and then. Of course, I might have been a little more lenient at times, but whatever I've said or done is because I was ambitious for you. I wanted you to amount to something. Now, if this young lady is all that you think she is, why not wait and give her a chance to prove herself? 
Now, what's the use of bringing that all up again? She's made me realize that I can amount to something. And if I lose her, I'll probably finish up the way you expect. Well, I guess I told her. But it didn't make me very happy to see him walk off with a strange girl and forget us all. I'm not so sure that it isn't just that kind of a girl that'll make a man of John. Oh, he's nothing but a moron or he wouldn't fall for a dame like that. I don't know how he ever happened to be in this family. Simply because he has inherited some of your grandfather's traits doesn't alter the fact that he is still our son and your brother. You're talking nonsense. It was just for holiday, John. A glorious sweet interval. But I'm not the one to ruin your life. We're going to forget all about it. We don't need them. We have our own lives to live. I've made up my mind and nothing you'll ever say will change it, Johnny. Oh, but Julia. Nothing you'll ever say. Why, you're being ridiculous. Yes, sir, Doc. We're going to get him a bow and arrow. And a pair of wings, so he can be a little cupid. Wings is something you will never have, Alex. <laughs> when does the wedding take place, Simon? If it should end in a wedding, it would make me very happy. When did you hear from this young Romeo, lad? Oh, it's more than a week ago. And, uh, I have a theory that, uh, I'm getting an invitation for the wedding. Yeah. The next time you hear from him, they'll be bringing him in as a DOS for the alcoholic ward. <laughs> it is not so. He's never going to drink no more. No, no more. Only just as much. You shouldn't say that, Alex, if it isn't so. Hello. Uh, just a minute. Oh, well, Herman. Yeah? Sergeant Muldoon wants to talk to you. Muldoon, for me? Yeah. They just pinched the bride for shoplifting. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, that's me. No. No. I remembered he was a friend of yours, so I didn't want to run him in. He's over here at Casey's. Don't do nothing. Uh, I'll take care of it. I'll be over right away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Muldoon. He's been around here for a week. I don't know where he gets that stuff he's been drinking. I know where he gets it. And I know the kind of dynamite that you pass out here, Casey. Take him along with you. I don't want him around here. He's a friend of a friend of mine, and he's going to stay here until they come and get him. And you'll look after him, or I'll bust this place wide open, no matter how much drag you've got. What's the rumpus, Herman? I got to do something right away. I, I got to get over to Casey's at the viaduct. What do you want over at that gin mill? A friend of mine needs me. Alex, you look after everything here. I will not. Will you do me the favor, Luke? No, sir. You leave here and you're going to get fired, sure. No, I don't want no part of it. I got to do something, Doctor. I've got to do something. Now, don't go running off again. You know what the soup said. What's it all about? You wouldn't understand. Listen, Herman. Is that little punk cockeyed over at Casey's? He is no punk. He's a no-good tramp, and you'd better keep out of it. I know what kind of boy he is. You're right, Herman. You'd better think of your wife and kids. Give me a candle 4516, hurry. Such a nice young man. And a sweet young girl, and they are in trouble. Hello? Hello? Yes. Is this Julia? No, sir. This ain't Miss Julia. Hold on. Hello? Yes. Yes. Oh, all right, Herman. I'll go right over. Is there something else I could do, Miss Julia? No, thanks, Mildred. Nothing more. And I'll be going. Good night. Good night.
Julia. I suppose you despise me. No, certainly not. Drink some more coffee. Why didn't you leave me there? That's all I'm fit for. I'll get you some more toast. Julia, you've got to listen to me. When I felt that I had lost you, I, I just let go. I didn't care what happened. I know what it means to not care what happens. It wouldn't have been like this if things had turned out differently. But that's all over now. I guess I'll have to ask you to forget me. I'm down and out. I haven't got a thing to offer you. What I would like to say is that I'll never forget you. There'll never be anybody else. Thanks for all the things you've done for me. John, where are you going? I don't know. Destination unknown. Johnny, don't go. It wasn't your fault. We both failed. We need each other. If you still want me, I'll marry you. Oh, dummy. Rummy. No, oh, Julia, I can't get along without you. You're all I've ever wanted. We've got to go away from here. Someplace else. Anywhere where we can start all over again. Some place where we can have a real little home and live just like other human beings. And just have each other. Oh, that sounds heavenly. But first of all, I've got to get a job. But we mustn't wait. I'm afraid something will happen. I'll work. I'll earn the money. John, suppose... Just suppose I could fix it. Would you go away with me right away? Yes, but how could you fix it? You love me and trust me, don't you? Of course, dear. Then let me try. It means our happiness, our whole future. And I'd do anything to ensure that. Maybe Dad would... Please, Johnny, they might try to stop us. Now you go and get packed and we'll go away tonight and start all over again. Okay, honey, just as long as I'm sure you're mine. Give me a little time, then hurry back. Right. Well, have I buy any engagements this afternoon? Of course. That's fine. I'm awfully tired. Hello? Yes, miss. All right. Yes. <clears throat> hello? Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, this is a glad surprise. That's strange. <laughs> you know, I, I was just thinking about you. Of course, I'll do anything I can to her. Why don't you tell me all about it when uh, we meet? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I have an engagement this afternoon. Well, suppose you meet me uh, tonight at six and we'll have dinner. Fine, I'll be expecting you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. There you go. All of interrupting me is the best part of the story. Well, you have to throw your butts all over the floor. The regulation says no smoking. You see it? Yeah, and the regulation says no visitors hanging around, too. Who's talking about visiting? The punk's in there. Hello, Herman. Hello, Johnny. I'm, I'm happy to see you. I suppose you thought we'd forgotten all about you. How is the little girl? Oh, she's fine. That's what I came about. To thank you for what you did last night. Oh, that's nothing. I wanted to tell you that we're going to be married. You don't say. That's fine. Fine. Just like it should. 
a sweet young girl and a fine young man. Oh, I'm going to be, Herman. I promised myself to try to be worthy of her. She's the grandest girl in the world. And you'll make her happy, I know. And you'll invite me to the wedding. Weddings are such happy things. I, I always feel like crying. Oh, we'll see that you're there, all right. Now, I've got to go. I'm supposed to meet Julia. But before I do, I want to tell you that you're the finest friend I have ever had. That makes me happy. Well, and everything is just fine. I knew it would be. You tell the little girl that I love her and that I'll kiss her at the wedding. Okay, Herman, I'll tell her. So long. So long. Well, it's like I said. It's going to be a wedding. They don't turn out all bad. Once in a while they do, but not this time. It's like the Japanese suicide. It's a wedding. Baloney. You'll see. You'll see I'm right. Ah, now I've got you in my parlor. It's a spider to the fly. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've had your dinner, why not uh, take off your hat and stay a while? It's mine. Up to your old tricks again, huh? Mm. <laughs> You know, Julia, you're wonderful company. Come on, please. Stay for me and stay. I can't. I've told you why. Well, does he know you uh, came here? No, I I don't think he'd allow me to accept anything from him if he knew about it. This is your own fault, you know. It was your suggestion that I come to you if I needed help. Mm, no, I won't fail you. Have you said about all the hard knocks you can endure? Yes, I have. I'm tired of just existing. With John, I know I'm going to have happiness, something solid to build on. That's what I hope to give you. You can't, Stanley. But you can help me to find it with him. That is, if you haven't changed your mind. Well, I don't come back on my word. I'll do whatever I can. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Please don't. Can't do something to please me. What? So you were going away with him tonight. You know, I may never see you again. You know, Julia, I'm not, uh, I'm not giving much to romance. But, uh, I've built an air castle, too. It was probably all a dream, but you were included in it. I'd like to see you before you go. Just not asking too much, hmm? please. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. It's right in here. for you, Julia. It's incomplete to that. It's enough to take a girl's breath away. But you mustn't try to tempt me with it. It only represents what I want you to have. Beautiful things of life, beautiful clothes, visit beautiful places, listen to beautiful music, together. Please, Stan. It's no use. I've made my decision. Are you determined to sacrifice yourself to this stupid idea? But it isn't stupid. I love him. I'm lonely for you, Julia. You know, I, I'm terribly fond of you. Don't throw away your youth, the laughing part of your life, for something that's bound to be only a sort of struggle. Stay here. Please, Stan. You know how I feel. Then you force me to make your decision for you. Well, pardon me, I, I'll have to answer it. I sent my man away. Please wait. you send for me? Oh, yes. Won't, won't you come in? Your message said it was important about Julia. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, come in and sit down. Can I offer you a drink? No, thanks. Uh, I haven't very much time, so what is it you want to say about Julia? Very well, I'll come directly to the point. Julia's not going away with you. Well, what have you got to do with it? Possibly something you have to consider. I have a prior claim. 
you mean by that? Then, uh, you wish me to speak more plainly? Yes, please do. But she belonged to me before she went to you. Why, that's a lie. Ah, uh-uh. You're not getting a thing by losing your head. Pardon me, just a second. Julia. Is it a lie that she's here with me now? Is it a lie that she came here tonight to get money from me? To give you? John, I don't want you to misunderstand about my being here. I do understand this. You're here and you told me you knew a way to get some money. Johnny, you've got to listen to me. Sure, listen to some more pretty schemes. Listen to you tell me how we could start all over. Well, I don't want to start over where he left off and with his money. I know that kind of woman and I know the kind of man that takes her money. Johnny! I suppose you thought I was so low that it didn't matter. I don't blame you for that. You picked me out of the gutter. But why did you tell me you loved me? Women like you don't love, they sell. That's why you came here. But well, go on, let him buy you. I don't want you. I wouldn't share the gutter with you. Cheap, common little liar. John! Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julia, Julia, please. Come on, get hold of yourself. You know, I, I did it because you forced me to act him. I couldn't let you go away with him. You would have destroyed everything lovely and beautiful about you. Oh, Mom, it's better that you start right now and forget all about it. I can make you the happiest girl in the world. Don't touch me. I came here because I thought you really wanted to help me. But you only think of yourself. You killed the only thing in the world I had. Let's really go. Right. Any chance for me to try it? Come in. Well, miss, what's the excuse tonight? I suppose you're expecting a check by your uh, wireless? I haven't any excuse. I've been very patient. Mm. And my patience is at an end. And so is your living here. All right, I'll go. As soon as I pass. No, no, you don't. You leave everything as is until you pay your bill. Maybe your wealthy friends can help you in that. See how it feels to be so virtuous when you ain't got no place to sleep. coffee with sugar. He needs sugar. He ain't sweet like you, Cupid. For that, you don't get any more coffee. How's business with the matrimonial agency, Herman? Oh, doctor, you shouldn't joke. I I'm worried. Since two weeks, I, I haven't heard a thing. Maybe the bride is getting her trousseau. Didn't you get an invitation to the wedding? Maybe they are married already. M maybe, maybe everything is all right. I don't know. Oh, quit worrying, Herman. They're not worth it. If there was a wedding, they should have invited me. Even if it was only the city hall, but they should have invited me. It would have made me happy. Quick, stretcher. Maybe that's another one, Herman. You can oh. start all over again. What is that? This is an emergency case. It's right here. Right in here.
Name, please. Miss Julia. Julia. What happened? Don't you know me? I'm Herman. Herman, don't you know me? She don't know nothing. Can't you see that? Where's Johnny? He promised to take care of you. Oh, leave her alone. What is it, Doctor? Pneumonia. Get her upstairs right away. She'll have to have serum as soon as possible. The crisis, Doctor? Yes, got to bring it on immediately. What can we do, Doctor? Regular routine. Serum will bring on a crisis. Next three or four hours, she'll be over the jumper in the morgue. Sorry about that kidding, Herman. Gee, that's too bad. She was a nice kid, too. And that punk of yours was gonna marry her. Look, I, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. Now, what are you doing, Herman? I've got to find Johnny. I've got to find him right away. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't be a sap. Why, that drunken lug wouldn't even go to her funeral. Uh, I've got to find Johnny. I've got to find Johnny. He, he don't know. He don't know. You know what that means. The soup will fire you. Didn't you hear what he says? She'll come to him three or four hours. And then she'll be conscious. And then they sink again, you know. And we got to get Johnny here when that time comes. We got to get him here. Well, losing your job ain't going to help her any. 1429 Daring Street. That's about uh, an hour with a street car. 1429 Daring Street. 1,429 dairies. Now, don't do it, Herman. They'll fire you short. You'll be sorry. Herman! I don't want you to feel that I'm urging you to go away, son. Mm, I don't. I want to go away from here. I want to go someplace where I can live like a human being, where there are no temptations, where I can start off new. I'm glad you feel that way about it. You've been pretty swell, Dad, after the wreck I've made of things. Well, you're still young enough to change all that? All except one thing. I can't change that. Well, we agreed not to mention that. That's why I want to go away from here, so I can forget it ever happened. Don, I'm putting you on your honor. I don't care anything about the past. I'm only concerned in your future. Don't worry about me, Dad. That's all over. It's finished. Good. That's the way to finish it. You'll have time to forget. When you come back, well, we'll start a new page, eh? Okay, Dad. Oh. The bags are in the car, son. Thanks, Mother. You sure you don't want us to go down to the steamer with you? No, I don't like those last-minute farewells. I'd much rather say goodbye here. Baby. So long, Dad. So long, son. I want to see Mr. John Russell. Mr. Russell is not at home. It's very important. His sweetheart is dying. I've got to see him. I'm sorry, but I can do nothing for you. But you've got to help me. I came all the way with a streetcar from the hospital. I've got to find him. We maybe only got one hour and a half. I've got to get hold of him. What is it, Beck? A person to see Mr. John, sir. Well, John's gone. Send him away. It's about someone being ill, sir. This man is from the hospital. Oh, well, come in. I, I, I'm Herman. I want to see Mr. John Russell. What do you want to see him about? It's about the little girl. She is ill in the hospital. Maybe she is dying. What girl? Julia. Julia Wilkins. The little girl he's going to marry. That's a closed episode. If that's what you came here about, you are wasting your time. He told me he loved her. And he'll take care of her. And now, pneumonia. 
she's ill at the hospital. I've got to see him. Well, that's difficult. He's on his way to Europe. Oh, can't you help me? We maybe only got one hour, then it's the crisis. I want Johnny. Oh, when she is conscious, then. And if she don't see him, she may be no will. You've got to do something. Well, there's nothing I can do. Wait. Wait. Don't you understand? She's dying. I've already told you that my son is gone. You... You are Johnny's papa. Oh, then you must understand if you are papa. I'm a papa, too. But if it was your girl, she wouldn't need you. You don't know that little girl. She is sweet and just like your boy is a fine young man. And, and she loves him. She, she, she needs him. She, she ain't got no one in the world. She's all alone. And, and now she's ill at the hospital and, and waiting for Johnny. If it ain't too late. Which hospital is it? The weather, sir. Oh, have my car brought around to the front. Yes, sir. We'll catch him at the dock. I knew you would understand. What is it, dear? Uh, Telephone the Riverside Hospital. There's a patient there, Julia Wilkins. She's to have everything that money can buy. Of course, dear. Oh, uh, oh, oh, this is Herman. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. Yes, come on, come on. Operator, please give me the Riverside Hospital. Hurry, it's very important. I'm sorry to see you here again, Herman. Yes, I, I'm sorry to be here too. Absent without leave for three hours. Yes, that's right. Do you remember what I said to you the last time you were in this office? Yes, you said you are going to fire me. What do you think I should do? Well, I guess you should fire me. But there was love between them. It was only a misunderstanding. But it's a fine thing about love. Love? Yes. Sentimental rot. Well, much as you deserve it. I'm not going to fire you. Thank you. Is it... Uh, because you have the same feeling? No, idiot. It's because young Russell's father is the heaviest donor to this hospital. Is that so? Yes. Perhaps you can help us waste it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very much obliged that it won't happen again. I promise it won't happen again. Julia. Julia, can you hear me? I searched all over for you. I wanted to tell you how wrong I was to ask you to forgive me. Can you give me a chance to explain? Oh, you didn't need to explain, honey. If I hadn't been so hot-headed, I would have understood. I wrote you a letter telling you all that. Didn't get it? I know, it was returned to me. I have it with me if you care to look at it. I, I can't see plainly, Johnny. You read it for me. Darling, I've been thinking over all the things I said to you that horrible night. I can hardly believe it happened. I thought when you said you loved me and wanted to go away so we could have all the things we talked about, that it was just a way of letting me down easily. That you just told me of all these beautiful dreams because I was a sentimental fool. I want to believe they were all true. I can't believe otherwise. I could not love anyone as I love you without her loving me a little in return. God wouldn't let it happen. Please tell me I'm right. Please say that it was all a mistake and let me try to convince you of how sorry I am for my actions. If it is true, little sweetheart, it doesn't matter. 
I can't live without you. There is just a chance, of course, that, that I'm a sap kidding myself into thinking you really care. I'll know soon enough. If I don't receive an answer by Friday, I'll know I'll have made too big a fool of myself to be forgiven, and that you want to end it once and for all. In that event, I'll be leaving for Europe. P.S. I'm praying. And I am, Julia. Mushy, Johnny. Very mushy. Oh, honey, can't you be serious, even now? <laughs>